the recrudescence of forces uh, like the Chetniks, the Serbian Orthodox uh, fascists who took the, exactly the same view except the other way around. See the craven way in which our spinalist media, which always defers to people of faith, say that it was Serbs who shelled Sarajevo or Croats who shelled Mostar when what they should have been saying was today the Christian Orthodox militia bombarded an open city around the clock or yesterday the Catholic forces shelled Mostar from dawn till dusk. They didn't do it because it's a matter of taste. We're supposed to respect people of faith and we're supposed to respect them while they do this and, and do that and make this sort of excuse. Uh, there, are, there aren't enough words in my lexicon at any rate to express the contempt that I think any right-thinking person must feel for this conscription of this kind of medieval barbarism. Um, Joan will tell me when I've got a minute. I don't know how, whether I'm yet trespassing on my, um, my rivals and my allies' time, but um, if I was to add uh, Bombay to this list, the city that was very nearly ruined by the sectarian partition of India in 1947, 1948, where once again people were told it's a matter of faith what kind of Indian you are. You may have to become a Pakistani if you're Muslim. You may have to lose your life on the proposition. You may not just be a Hindu. Uh, Bombay more or less survived this, the terrifying ethnic cleansing and the pogrom uh, that ensued when the subcontinent was mutilated and maimed and partitioned on, on this basis in the hopes of a genuine Indian unity and independence ruined by way of appeasement of, of uh, people of faith. But Bombay sort of recovered until recently when now its name has been changed. Uh, its minority citizens persecuted, intimidated, driven out by a new Hindu nationalist a party, the Shiv Sena, that says that, again, if you, don't, if you do not follow the right God, if you don't uh, accept the supernatural as a real force in everyday life, you are not worth uh, whatever it takes to become or to remain or be treated as an ordinary democratic civilized human being in, again, one of the great cities of Asia. Now, it's not part of my case, and I'm sure it's not part of Professor Grayling's or Professor Dawkins's either, to say that religion is the reason for all of this, or the exclusive or sole reason for all of it. I think it would be crude and reductionist to say that. But who is going to argue, I'll be fascinated to see, who is going to argue that the matter of faith, that the religious allegiance, that the preachings of religion have not in all these cases gravely exacerbated, gravely deepened, gravely poisoned and prolonged all of these things that have made our tenuous civilization extremely difficult to defend, uphold, maintain, let alone to advance. I don't believe this case could be made. That's for a simple reason, because religion is not provided to us by revelation. It doesn't come from the heavens. It doesn't come from the beyond. It doesn't come from the divine. It's man-made, and it shows. It shows very well that religion is created, invented, imposed by a species half a chromosome away from the chimpanzee. It shows, doesn't it? Well, why do we deceive ourselves on this point? And is there anywhere, I'm now going to wind up, is there anywhere of the, of the places I've mentioned, and I exempt Basra and all the other bees I could take you around, where it wouldn't be enormously welcome if there was a mass conversion to secularism or a mass adoption of the secular idea and principle of the principles of Bertrand Russell, who once spoke famously from this platform of Thomas Paine, of Thomas Jefferson, of Voltaire, and, and others. And I'll close by saying that I want you to be on your guard against two false issues in this respect, and I'll be very brief. Um, when I mentioned those gentlemen, and I could mention some ladies too in this connection, like Mary Wollstonecraft, don't let anyone tell you that, oh, well, secular tyranny is just as bad. <clears throat> After all, there have been fascist and communist dictatorships which have been just as revolting. Fascism, as you know, was supported by the Catholic Church all through its life, and in fact, till after it had died, and still is defended by it. One of the leaders of the Axis was actually the Japanese leader, was actually a god. There's no way of saying fascism and national socialism and the Axis was secular. And in the case of Stalinism and Maoism and the Khmer Rouge, the same mistake is made, and a religion is made out of man. It's the religious impulse itself that I think we need to opposed to criticize, to criticize in ourselves as well as in others. The argument from faith, in other words, the argument from certainty. So those of us who maintain this may not be described, my closing point, as fundamentalists or secularists, as certain cheap 
and demagogic and opportunist forces have recently been suggesting. We do believe in evidence, we do believe in skepticism, we do believe in reason, we hold our views, we hold our views with as much conviction and principle as any god botherer does, but we are open to the argument and we're going to prove it tonight to you. And don't let anyone dare to imply there's a moral equivalence between us and the fanatics and the fools and those who think they know God's will and can tell you what it is, who are our enemies, and your enemies too. So, I beg to propose the motion that stands in our name. Thank you.